Santa Day. Wondering what we're going to be called President's Day. We celebrate President Day every February by honoring our national presidents. Two of our greatest American presidents were born in February. George Washington was born on February 22. Abraham Lincoln was born on February 12. President Day always falls between these two important birthdays on the third Monday of the month. George Washington was born on February 22, 1732, in the British colony of Regina. At the time, there were no country called the United States of America. There were 12 American colonies that belonged to Great Britain. One more colony after, after Georgia was born, making a total of 13. George's family moved to Fairy Farm when he was six years old. He loved to ride horseback over the hills and fields. George went to school as often as he could, but he usually did lessons at home, as most children did at the time. He liked math best. He also learned from adults around him. George liked to learn by watching and listening. When George was 11 years old, his father died. After this, he spent much of his time with his brother, Lawrence, who was 14 years older than George. Lawrence lived on a farm. He had named Mount Varnum. Lawrence helped Georgia improve his mind and his manners. He was a herald to Georgia. With Lawrence help, Georgia George learned to be a savior at age 16. He was given his first job exploring the, and mapping the Virginia frontier. When George was 12, Lawrence died. This was a sad time for George. He decided to leave Mount Vernon. Eager for adventure, George joined Virginia's army. By the time he left the army six years later, he had become commander of the troops. At age 26, George married Martha Custis with a young widow with two children. Martha was very wealthy for her wedding. She wore a yellow silk dress, purple stain, slanted shoes, and pearls in her hair. George was handsome in a blue jacket lined with red silk. Washington returned to Mount Vernon with his new family. He read at all the latest books on farming. George liked trying new ideas. The Washington spent 16 peaceful years at Mount Vernon. But trouble was on its way. People in the American colony did not think they were belong treated fairly by the British. A meeting was called to discuss the problem. Washington watched and listened. When he arrived, At the second meeting, Washington was wearing his old army uniform. Everyone knew what that meant. Washington thought the time had come to fight for freedom from the British. Washington asked to lead the American army. He accepted but the job, but he refused to accept any pay. On July 4, 1776, the United States of America adopted its Declaration of Independence and claimed freedom from Great Britain. A revolutionary war followed for a while. It looked as if the British would win.
But General Washington was clever and determined. A British general called him the Old Fox. Once George, once Washington organized a surprise attack on Christmas night, he led his soldier across the Delaware River in dark, cold weather, and won an important victory. The war lasted for eight years. In 1784, the United States and Great Britain made peace. At last, the American people had won freedom for their country. After war, Washington left the army and returned to Mount Vernon for five years. He was happy just to be a farmer. Then, once again, Washington was asked to help his country. The United States of America needed a president. Every th one thought Washington would do a great job. Although he was content at Mount Vernon, Washington answered and called to serve his country. George Washington was elected as our first president in 1789. There are many problems facing the new country. President Washington tried to do what was right, even when it was not easy. He worked hard to make the country strong. Washington enjoyed planning a new capital city. He chose a stake on the Potomac River across from Mount Vernon, the city was later named Washington in his honor. After his second term as president, Washington returned home to Mount Vernon for the first time. Two years later, on December 14, 1799, he died. Harry Lee, a longtime friend of George Washington, spoke at the memory service. Fourteen words of Lee's tribute to Washington had became famous. First in war, first in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen. In tribute, the minister Richard Allen recalled Washington advice. I love your country to obey its laws, to seek its peace. Many years later, in 1885, the towering Washington monument was dis dedicated to the memory of the, our first president. We remember George Washington on President Day. He worked, he, he worked to make our country free and strong. For this, we celebrate him. And that's the end of President's Day, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Turn on notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye.